Time, though, we start off with the city of Martinsburg Police Chief Aaron Gibbons. Chief, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. I, I thank you very much for having me on this morning. So let's talk about the threat incident at North Middle. We had Superintendent Ron Stevens on yesterday who gave us uh, many details on the program. And uh, if you could, uh, your overview on the situation there on Tuesday of this you week. Know, we, we have a lot to discuss in the after action. Whenever something like this arises, we have an after action report that we actually like to go through and we actually meet together. We'll meet together next week and kind of go through um, everything that went right, everything that went wrong. But it was important for everybody to know that, you know, coming into this situation, we didn't have all the information that everybody had once it was complete. So it was an ongoing investigation. And when I actually received the call, my staff was already on scene. So we already had officers at the school um, and we didn't even have to ask, you know, Martinsburg City Police, Berkeley County Sheriff's Office. We had West Virginia State Police. We had the task force. We had um all the school board, there were a lot of school board members out there at the school, so everybody showed up in force, and it was a really great response to this un- very unfortunate incident. That's a very good uh, use of communication there, Chief. How was that executed that so many people had so much information so quickly and were able to react? Well, our, I, I, surely it wouldn't say social media, because by the time I had arrived, um, there were already a lot of parents. Now, of course, there is a growing concern whenever something like this um, sparks up. You know, a lot of the parents will start showing up because they're getting messages from their kids inside the school. And that, I wouldn't say it's disinformation, but there was a lot of misinformation that was transferred to these parents. Um, but as far as our communication goes, this radio traffic that we had, it was very thorough. It was very on point. Um, it was broadcast throughout the entire um, city. Um, Berkeley County picked up on it. Um, State police picked up on it as well. So that's why we had such a great law enforcement response, and it was extremely immediate um, response. Chief, how do you discern what's truth and what's not? Uh, For instance, at one point Tuesday, I was sent a screenshot that there is an active shooter at North Middle, which implies exactly what it says. However, that was never correct. That was never correct. And that's that's what I mean by and and I will give props to the parents. A lot of these parents, you know, when they showed up and of course we had to I did come out and speak to a lot of the parents that that had shown up, just giving them the information that we had at the time. Now, of course, we're not going to say that this isn't an active shooter if we don't know at the time. Um, So the biggest thing for us was, one, getting in the building and getting our eyes on the students and what is actually going on. So this information that gets transferred to the parents, we can only give them so much information, but we'll give them as much information as we can, as we possibly can. It went from there's an active shooter to eventually there was a kid with a gun in the backpack in the school that was discovered, and uh, that's where an arrest was made. That was the next uh, misinformation that went out, Chief. Yeah, and a, like I said, a lot of that information is coming from the, the, the students in the school. That's getting transferred to the parents, and then the parents take it and run with it. They, get, they put it on Facebook, Snapchat, whatever they want to do with it. Now, it, it, it is a concern. It really is a concern when you have a picture of the backside of the school Well, we didn't know at first, um, you know, this kid had actually taken a picture of the backside of the school. Well, he didn't take the picture of the backside of the school. It was actually the backside of the school picture that was on the Internet. So he so he had actually taken this picture, put it on his Snapchat. And that's that actually made things even worse. But as far as we were concerned, our biggest our biggest chore in all of this was just getting our eyes on the on the students and trying to figure out, one, is there a student in the school that is a threat? Is he inside? Is he outside? Do we need to lock down all the schools around? Well, of course we do, just until we are sure 100 percent that there is no active threat. Now, the parents and the kids, you know, you have kids hiding under desks, and then we appreciate that and we understand that. I'm not going to um, fault them in in doing that. However, 
it's part of that disinformation that gets transferred throughout social media that causes a lot of that a- that action. And these parents showing up and clearly upset. I have four kids myself, so I clearly understand why they were upset. Um, however, once we get out there and start talking to them and actually giving them the accurate information of step by step what we are doing. OK, right now we're still in code orange because we're pinging some phones. When they when they get that information, the the kids might not be as at ease, but the parents are. And in regards to the information that goes out on social media, does any of that information ever make it to you or your officers so that you're looking at that and reacting to it? Or are you just disregarding all of that and waiting until you gather facts with your own eyes and and your own uh, interviews with people? No, every time that something came through on social media, it didn't matter if it was Snapchat, Facebook, we had that information. And surprisingly enough, and I was actually surprised that we had that information so quickly. Well, now they're saying that there's a, a student that just got arrested in the back of the building with a with a gun in his backpack. We see that as soon as the parents do. Usually we see it as soon as the parents do, and we address it at that point. Is this true? Is it not true? Okay, it's not true. Let me go out here and talk to everybody. Let me talk to all the officers, talk to some of the kids, go out here and talk to some of the parents. Uh, good morning, Chief. This is John Gilstrap. Uh, John, I, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, what I know about this is what I've I've heard actually on, on the, the morning news and the the news feed that I got on, on Tuesday and into Wednesday. This was a threat via Snapchat. Is that right? That is correct. What was the, taking at face value, to the degree that you can talk about this, taking at face value, what was the nature of the threat? Uh, it was, the nature of the threat was a, um, someone was threatening one of the students inside the school with, with violence. With violence. And was this, yes. is this coming from someone that the, the child knew? I don't believe, I don't, I honestly don't believe that the child even knew this kid. Because there's a connection to Michigan, apparently, according to the news reports, they traced it, the thing to a 10-year-old in Michigan. Is that right? Was this kind of... Yes. So is it shaping up? Yes. I, well, it's too early to draw conclusions, I think, but is this just a really bad random choice, perhaps, by a 10-year-old in Michigan? I don't know that it's a, a random um, choice or a random act. Um, it may have been, now you know how social media is now. You may have your son or your daughter that knows somebody from Oregon, and it's simply through uh, social media. So I don't know if it was an argument that started over social media or not, or how he actually is affiliated or even knows this kid, but he had a very specific name in mind. So the the successful result out of this, right? I mean, it, it's it's nobody got hurt and there was a, a quick response and, and everything worked. How directly tied is that level of success to the training that was done, I don't know, it feels like four or five weeks ago? I think it plays a very large part. You're talking about down in South Berkeley with the uh, sheriff that the sheriff had put on. I think it's it's a totality of all of our training, right? So, so we're, we're having this training. We'll run through these buildings. We'll run through the schools. We have maps of the schools. I think it played a very large part in how we actually respond because I, mean, I don't want to go through the entire process of actually stacking up and moving into a school, but the initial response to, to responding to a school incident like this is just get in the building. It doesn't matter how you get in the building. If you need to break in a window or whatever it takes, get inside the building. But I think it played a very large part in how we responded to this actually very specific incident. Um, But I think it also is a totality of all of our training because we train on this all the time. We really do. Whether it's in a school for for an active shooter in a school or if it's for um, a business or a local church or um, even our own department. We'll run drills through our own department. So So in a perfect world, what... It's one thing for for law enforcement, for emergency services to train, and then you have the wild card of of parents who are understandably very upset and very anxious to, well, I think there's a default to assume the worst, and then the easiest thing is to go and get your kid out and, and be done with it. What kind of training should we be providing to parents? What do we expect them to do? Um... 
in, in a situation like this, because especially with the misinformation that's going out, I mean, active shooter, nothing's going to get a, care, a parent away from their desk faster than that. What, what should parents be doing? Well, first of all, if I if I received a text message from my son saying that there was an incident like this happening in the school and he was under his desk, of course, I'd be I'd drop this phone and I'd be in my car. And I think we all would. Um, we we obviously had more parents showing up to get their kids from the school than we normally would on a normal day. However, that information that they're getting from these kids, I don't want them to dismiss this information. But when the police, what I would honestly really like to see happen is the parents to have more trust in law enforcement when they do respond to a situation like this. Maybe if they saw, and that's one thing why these big um, press releases after these um, drills that we had run down in South Berkeley, when we're giving this information out to the parents and all of uh, the community, they actually realize that we that starts building that trust and we can handle that situation. So I think the biggest thing for them is for them to actually trust that one, we have kids and we are going after this threat. We have kids too. We're going after this threat and trust us to handle this situation. Matt Harvey. Good morning, chief. Matt, how are you? I'm doing very well, sir. Very well. Um, the 10 year old in Michigan, there, I had heard that there, he had targeted other schools as well. Is that correct? I, I had heard that too, but I don't, ha I, I'll be honest, I don't have that information. I did hear that. But um, whether it was a very specific student in a school, I know that it was targeted towards a very specific student in this school. I don't know about the others. And I'll, I'll, I'm just saying I, I honestly don't know. And I'm assuming that there's going to be full full cooperation from you and the other law enforcement agencies in West Virginia to get that evidence to the Michigan authorities. Yes, absolutely. Actually, they were extremely helpful. We had, um, I'd say, probably within the first 45 minutes to an hour of us responding to that, we had law enforcement actually showing up to that kid's house. Does this get elevated? Does this get elevated to a federal crime now with the in, interstate um, and all that? I, 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 I'm not sure if how they're going to actually prosecute that. That might be a better question for the uh, prosecutor. Um, but I would imagine that it very well could be. Of course, keep in mind that this is a 10-year-old, so I'm not sure how they're going to. Michigan laws may be very different than ours. Chief Aaron but Gibbons. the FBI was involved in this situation. Did you have a follow-up, John? No, it's just the the enormity of the the enormity of the threat, and the fact that it comes from a thousand miles away, give or take, you know, eight hundred miles away, and then all of the agencies that are involved so quickly. I don't I don't know if if this is the perfect outcome or the worst nightmare. You know, that it's to be triggered by social media, which I've said on the air before, is the end of civilization as we know it. It's it just it's it's stunning. It really is. And and not only that, you know, we had a couple incidents like these like this last year where, you know, somebody would have a Snapchat um, threat towards a school or some, uh, you know, a person. And then a week from now, uh, somebody sees this Snapchat, was unaware of that Snapchat or that that screenshot, puts it out again. And all of a sudden we have another incident um, just sparking from an uh, from a Snapchat message that was sent off two weeks ago. So I, I agree, social media to this point is really not being very helpful when we're trying to um, curb things like this. And it's so easy. It, it, it almost makes it too easy to be for someone with criminal intent to be able to cause a lot of chaos in a very normal world as we would hope it would be. Chief, Chief Aaron Gibbons is our guest, City of Martinsburg Police Department. Chief, over the course of the summer, Berkeley County Schools made an effort to upgrade school entrances, school safe programs to make sure that it was uh, much more difficult to enter schools. Are you satisfied with the progress that you've seen to this point? Um, I, I am to this point, especially when we're going through and we're doing a lot of um, daily, especially when schools in, sh in session, we're going through daily and checking all of the city schools. And I'm, I'm, I know that county's doing the exact same thing. Um, but actually getting our eyes in these schools, 
Um, I know that they had, um, I believe it was called LifeLock installed, installed on a lot of the schools, and even churches are starting to put that in the uh, in the school. I believe it's called LifeLock. It's a little locking mechanism for some of the doors. I'm not sure how many of the schools, but, you know, going through these schools and actually um, doing a threat assessment, um, we're actually active in utilizing our SR, one of our SRT um, team leaders to actually go through some of these schools. We actually have a program that's going to be enacted here very soon to where they actually go and check um, the security measures of schools but they have been um, up to this point they have been looked at very thoroughly and I think up to this point I am fairly satisfied about the security of these schools but it, there is there that doesn't mean that there isn't room for improvement honestly um, like I said we're we really need to stay on this make sure nobody can get into these schools and make sure all of the schools safety measures are are up to par Delegate Michael Hornby, who is also the owner of this radio and uh, TV station here, uh, WRNR, has been in discussions with, he serves on the Education Committee in the House, he's been in discussions with the local school leaders about uh, safety resource officers in the schools in the county and the city as well. What would you like to see done with the SRO programs in the city schools, Chief, in terms of uh, numbers, availability, and, and how they're spread out? Man, I'll be honest. If I could have an officer in every single school, that would be that would be very <clears throat> good in my eyes. I mean, it really would. However, you know, staffing staffing levels for us, you know, we're down 13 right now. So just main just maintaining what we have um, as far as reactiveness. Um, you know, we can stay reactive as much as we want, but you know, going proactive. That's that's getting a little bit harder for us when we're down so many people. But I'd love to see an officer in every single um, school, even if it was a part-time officer. Um, so that's different ideas that we're, we're working on. Um, I have a bunch of stuff hopefully going in front of city council to help improve our staffing levels. Um, but, yes, I, I would definitely like to see a, an SRO in each school. Chief, I assume you've got the budget for those 13 positions. You're just having trouble finding the bodies to fill it? Absolutely. Absolutely. We are always recruiting. Well, give us the recruiting pitch, too. We've got a good-sized audience <laughs> here in the city about uh, being a city of Martinsburg police officer. Right now we are starting off at a um, – we're around 52.5 um, before the academy. After you get out of the academy, it's 55. Um, it's – 55 to 68 based on your certified experience uh, right now we have a 10,000 sign on for certified officers from the state of West Virginia um, we have a brand new step and grade pay plan which actually is extremely helpful when when these guys are trying to see what they'll be making two or three or four years from now our vacation leave is amazing we're up to I think it's 200 hours per year for vacation we have sick leave you can get up to 10 uh, 1,080 hours personal, uh, you get 24 hours a year. Comp, 480 years, you got great pension and benefit. Um, get your own take-home vehicle. Health insurance is excellent. 90% of, um, I believe, our premiums are covered by the city of Martinsburg. Uh, we have longevity pay, deferred compensation, tuition assistance. We have so many, so many things that... Um, you can look forward to with we ha, we do have a testing coming up on the 16th we've actually stepped up our testing dates to every two weeks um, and if there is something that you're you're you fail during the test you can come back and do it like if you fail the push-ups or sit-ups you can come back and do that um, a little bit later um, but yeah I, you know every time that I have this conversation with somebody it's it's easy to walk up to somebody and talk to them about actually becoming a police officer and in this day and age i understand i do very understand and we're not ignorant to the fact of why people wouldn't want to be a police officer these days um, however whatever that is that makes someone scared to be a police officer please just come talk to us because it is a very rewarding experience and when you get when you're out here in the community and you walk into a building and you see smiles on pe people's faces and you uh, have somebody walk up to you and appreciate everything that you're doing for the community. It's it, it really softens my heart when I hear it. So I, I really don't want anyone to be scared to actually apply for a police position, especially Martinsburg's. 
You're about to say, John. Well, first of all, that was an outstanding pitch. We're, we're all <laughs> well ready to get right now. I know. I'm a little old, perhaps, but I'm, <laughs> I, but I'm ready, man. Um, I just, hey, I'm winging it. I'm winging it. Here. <laughs> um, I'm curious what – take us inside the school. I mean, kind of imagine that you're a middle schooler, and, you know, after the, the student goes and makes this announcement to the principal, to the administration, what happens inside the school at that point? So at that point, of course, when we, when we came in um, – when by the time I had gotten there, the the show of force had already been utilized. So our officers had already been through the school. Of course, I'm the chief of police, so I show up a little bit late, right? That's kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when we get there, all of the I, I'm a retired firefighter. The, I know about police being late. So, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, I was gonna I was gonna show it the other way around. But no, um, all the doors are locked. Actually, you try one of the doorknobs, you cannot get in. All the windows are covered. It's very quiet, um, except for up in the administrative section of the school. Um, so once we had determined that, okay, we need to get these kids, we realized that there is no active threat inside the school. We have a couple hundred parents standing outside. I've already addressed all the parents standing outside. Let's get our eyes on each one of these kids and actually, one, show this picture to every classroom to see if anybody knows this kid and to kind of ease the minds of these students because that's really what we needed to do right off the bat but we wanted to make sure we didn't still have a threat around this school so us dividing up into groups going door to door putting a sticky note on the door after we had actually completed a search talked to the students and showed them the picture we go to door to door that got us in the motion of actually getting the kids starting to be released. But honestly, as I got there on the scene, and I had been to these, you know, while when I was in patrol, I had been to these um, these um, suspected school incidents where there's a, a threat of violence on one of the schools, and it is you would see it as very chaotic. But when you enter the school, when you're one of the first responders to enter the school. And it is an incident like this. It's actually very quiet. It really is. Everybody's hunkered down. The school, the doors are locked. The windows are covered, so you can't see in the classrooms. So they're they have their measures that they're that they're showing that they are utilizing. And then, of course, we have ours as, as far as stacking up and going into the building. You know, I, I have one comment, Chief, and it's really not a more a comment, not a question. But I'm going to be interested in seeing what happens to the parents. Of, of this 10 year old child because there there has to be it's hard for me to imagine that a 10 year old was been able to pull this off uh unless the parents were either absent in the child's life or or willfully um negligent of 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 supervising their 10 year old child and allowing this to happen on on more than one occasion yeah now i have four kids as I've said, I couldn't imagine one of my kids doing something like this. Do I keep my eyes on their social media 100% of the time? Absolutely not. Um, I kind of get an idea of what they're doing on social media. However, I can't, I don't watch their, and that's, that's very unfortunate. And that is why, you know, when he said that, that um, social media would be the downfall of society, that may very well be when we have incidents like this popping up from a 10 year old. Uh, boy, I mean, there, there is no reason that a 10 year old should be able to do something like this and cause chaos a thousand miles away. Chief, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate you guys very much. And uh, anytime you want to sit here and chat, and I'll give you my pitch again for the uh, police recruitment. I most certainly will. I think John wants to do a ride along. I Oh, yeah. Hey, Any, anytime. You come on. <laughs> Come on over. We'll 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 uh, go do some walkthroughs he, in some, he, uh, churches and schools. Done. He, he did a sit along with me. I don't <laughs> sit along. <laughs> we got hot dogs. Well, yeah. any, you know, with this new with this new position, there's a lot of sitting with this new position. I'll yeah. tell you that much. Well, don't be surprised Thanks. if an interested horde convenes in front of the police station now to apply for jobs. Just, hey, just hey, I would appreciate it very much. Hey, thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank you, Chief. I've heard thank you.